Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison and thank you for watching. Today I'm wanting to start a second video series and I, I kind of hope that eventually I'll get enough of them that, you know, enough ideas and stuff coming in that I can put one out uh, on the off weeks right now. So right now my, my current video series has a video every other Saturday and uh, I, I keep saying I want to make that more often, but Honestly, by the time I film it, edit it, and get it out there, it, it just takes a long time. So um, I'm hoping to make these short videos kind of like a, uh, just a little help video or how-to video and put these in the, uh, in the off weeks uh, between the videos or between the uh, larger videos right now. And I'll try and keep these to, you know, maybe less than 10 minutes for sure, closer to the five minute mark. Um, and the idea behind them is that they're just a how-to or a help guide on how to get something done. One of my jobs when I was in college was to work at an auto parts store and we had a help section there, which was just a, an area of the store that had a bunch of mostly universal parts, but they were kind of oddball items where you, you just probably weren't gonna carry that part in stock as a normal item otherwise. So, kind of gave me the idea, hey, you know, how about a help section for videos? And I want to keep, like I said, I want to keep them short. Um, this week's is going to be on electrical. Um, probably, I do a lot of electrical work for uh, different individuals. So probably we'll, we'll show a lot of the different electrical ideas I have um, or methods I use. And today's is going to be on how to crimp a uh, solderless connector properly so I'll show you some different kinds of solderless connectors and some different kinds of tools to to uh, crimp them the correct way and then in the future we'll do videos on maybe how to solder a wire I don't know there's probably a million videos out there on that already but we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that and the different tools I use to, to get the job done so like I said for today we're gonna talk about some solderless connectors and uh, we're going to try and show you the, the right ones to use and the wrong ones to use depending on the job. So let's start with the stuff you shouldn't use, or at least shouldn't use except for possibly in an emergency. So these two right here are wire connectors, but they are for residential or commercial work meaning for a building and uh, they are designed where you take two wires you strip off the uh, the insulation stick it in here you twist it till they get till it gets good and tight that connects the two wires together they're not made for vibration areas they're not made for being in a car um, I, I suppose they would work in a pinch you're stuck on the side of the highway you have a broken wire something you could use something like that save those for home though um, when you're installing a new light another residential version is this little one this is a solderless connector it has a, uh, a, a gel inside it an electrical gel um, that's supposed to help with continuity uh, it's actually made this one's made for like 22 and 24 gauge wires so this is a little large you stick two wires in here so if we had two separate wires with the insulation off of them, you stick that down in there, shove it all the way on, and then you take a pair of crimpers and you crimp it. These are great for alarm systems in your home because that's a low low wire or uh, low voltage wire. It's it's 22 to to 24 gauge typically. Does a great job. Again, probably not something you want to use in your car. The next kind is this little guy and it punctures the wire so you take the wire you slide it into this that's a little big for this particular connector slide it into the slot there and then I'll try and hold that up close enough you can see it there's a little sharp point in there and you stick it in here and as you tighten that it pierces the wire and you would hook your other wire in this side so now it makes a connection um, again I don't like these they're 
they're this is probably one of the more secure versions of this but uh, just not my preferred method of, of joining wires together this one's a similar type deal it's got a place for up to three wires and it's also got the the gel in there for for helping to seal it up you can you shove the wire in put up to two more in there you take a pair of pliers and you squeeze the blue part and the white part together I don't have a pair of pliers big enough really but you squeeze that together it crimps the wires together or it puts a, uh, a metal slice or metal pin through them connects them all together this actually came with a uh, Oh, a speaker kit or something that I recently bought as the method to hook them up. Again, great for your telephone system, your alarm system, in your home. Probably not great for your car. I don't think they're going to be watertight. They're probably not going to be very good as far as uh, as far as uh, vibration. And uh, this is a type where you don't actually have to uh, strip the wire. You can just put the wire in straight in right there, and it. It has a metal, kind of like that other that had the pins, it has a metal bunch of pins in there that as it puts in there, it pierces the insulation. So another one that, this is a simple version. You see these come in kits all the time for adding fog lights or whatever to your car. The idea is you, you again, you don't have to strip the wiring. You put the wire across there and your second wire would be over here and you put it together grab a pair of pliers and you crimp down on it and it gets you the ability to hook a couple of wires together. Let's talk about the proper connectors that you can use in a car and this is just a small assortment but these are probably some of the most common types you're going to see. First thing I'm going to show you here are some butt connectors. The yellow ones being for uh, 12 gauge and larger so 12, 10, 8. As the number gets smaller the, the wire size gets larger similar with uh, sheet metal or, some, or steel. Um, blue ones are good for 14 and 16 gauge and the red ones are good for uh, 22 up to 18 gauge and the top three here, the ones closest to you, are are not weather tight, they're not uh, they're, you want to have that inside the cabin uh, inside the car somewhere so that they're not getting moisture or anything on them. So we said that one's not weather tight. These two look similar. The difference being this one is a weather tight connector. Um, a little less metal here so again still gonna have about maybe 3 16 of an inch of, of wire exposed when you strip it. When you put it in there there's actually a little bit of solder in the center and this tubing is actually shrinkable so as you apply heat to it it will shrink up and clamp the wire in place as you again while you're applying that same heat the solder inside there it's a, a low melt solder will melt helping make a, a stronger connection so when I do use a butt connector this is the type I prefer now what is this one well it looks like this it has a similar coating it's actually exactly the same as this one um, it's basically somebody's tried to fool you into thinking you're buying instead of a four or five cent connector and a 25 cent connector they're trying to sell you this one for this price it doesn't shrink it doesn't have any solder on the inside it's just a non weather tight connector um, it functions just fine for its purpose next thing we need to talk about is actually how do you get these things to crimp Right here, the most common, this one has, this is a universal type tool. It has uh, replaceable jaws that basically do what these others do. So most of us have had a set of these. Uh, they have a wire stripper built in, which is similar to this. Not nearly as sharp, really don't work quite as well, but they do function. It's got a cutter, which is similar to the front end here, a pair of nippers. And then the back end, if you look very close, has actually two places to crimp wire. There's this one and this one. 
Now here's the difference. Many of, them will tell, many of them will say it, but it's hard to read it some places. This crimp with the little point in it is actually not made for one with the insulation on it. What happens when you use it with the insulation is you get you get a nice crimp, it's good and tight, but it splits the plastic, causing your insulation to, to not be, you know, basically your insulation often will fall off or break apart, and now your connection's not insulated at all. What it's made for is when you're using a connector that doesn't have an insulation on it, that point should be away from, you can see in there, there's a little split in the metal that point should be on the back side away from that split. Now the inside there is made for the insulated connectors and it's so that it won't puncture or damage the plastic. So this set of pliers is basically a heavy duty version of this same thing. There's the part with the point on it and in front of it has the without. So let's do a couple of crimps here real quick. We're going to use some, these are 16 gauge connectors. So we'll put this 16 gauge on here. Like I said, the point goes away. Let me get it lined up. Okay, so it's lined up in there. Put your wire in there. Crimp it down. And when you look, you get a nice tight fit. The crimp is on the back side. It's not coming off there. Same thing on the other side. If we put this butt connector on here, now we need to use the other side of the tool, the flat, the part that has the flats on it. Crimp it down. Get a nice firm pull. There's no damage to the plastic. It's not punctured in anywhere. And you've got a good insulated connector. So that's how to use these two types of connectors or uh, of pliers, crimpers. Next is this part, which is a ratcheting one. It's great for the same jobs. Now it has replaceable jaws. This set of jaws right here, if you look, looks very similar to the jaws with the point in them, and that's because it does exactly the same job. And I like this one because it ratches ratchets so as you ratchet it then it it makes it a little easier to get a crimp on especially on the big wire so that that set of jaws does the same job as this tool this set of jaws is just like the flats on this tool when it crimps it keep its so this one's for an insulated this is for a non insulated and then the jaws I have in it are for a third type of connector. So we've got a butt connector that just has the single barrel with one split in it. This particular one I just took the plastic off so we could see the inside. So with the plastic on, same thing, we would use the flat parts of the tool to squeeze it. With the plastic off, we'd use the part with the little point on it. Well, there's a second type that has two sets and the barrel isn't formed. And that's what this set of jaws does here. This, uh, the jaws, if I, if I get it close enough here, you can see there are actually two levels in there. One set of jaws is slightly larger than the other set. So we're gonna put this in. We put it where the points are headed inbound so that as it goes in, they'll curve in get it to that first click that'll hold the connector in place. It's a 16 gauge connector that we're using here so we're going to put the wire in there. And what we get is the wire is caught in the first set of jaws, the insulation in the second set to make a very secure connection. And I had you can see here part of the problem I had the wire just a little bit long could have had it closer to uh, an eighth of an inch long instead of the oh, probably a little over a quarter inch that I actually had so different kind of butt connector this one 
that little tang on the back is because it's made to mount inside a plastic case um, but it gives you an idea of the, how those are done you can get that job done with these it's just very slow very tedious because you're trying to crimp twice you don't have a good way of holding it and that's when a set of jaws like this and a and this tool work really well again thanks for watching hope you learned something from it i hope this helps you in some way and like i said i'm going to try and edit this down to about a five minute video here so we'll see how close i get thanks again thanks for watching allison customs project car tv like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.